Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we have just a somewhat random video for you. This is a video about rearing layer birds and the production of eggs, but specifically, we're looking at the housing for broiler and layers. Now, the reason why I said this is a random video is because I just took a video, two minutes, three minute video, when I visited the school farm you know, earlier today, and I just decided to make a video out of it to use it as a teachable moment as, and it also covers one of the topics within the syllabus with regards to housing for poultry. All right. So, so what we're looking at today is one particular type of housing system for poultry. We're looking at the deep litter system of housing, the deep litter system of housing for boilers and layers. But let's look at some of the characteristics that housing for boilers and layers should have. Let's say poultry pens should be situated in a well-drained area, be constructed so that they are about 10 meters wide and have a convenient length, have a foot bath at the entrance of for biosecurity, a range of measures that protects farm against the spread of pests and diseases, be oriented lengthwise in a west east-west direction to keep out sunshine. Be made of lumber with a aluminum zinc roof with ease uh, that extend outwards by one meter to keep out rain. Have a slightly sloping concrete floor for easy cleaning and washing. Have a brick wall 30 to 45 centimeters high to retain litter in a deep litter system. That's what we're looking at, a deep litter system. Be enclosed with wire mesh from the top of the brick wall to the ceiling. Be barricaded with feed bags, especially on the windward side to keep out rain and cold drafts. Have a doorway one meter wide to allow a wheelbarrow to transport in feed or waste to move through it. Have sufficient ventilation and suitable lighting. As what is the deep litter system? The deep litter system, this type of system is commonly used for rearing of broiler and layers. In a deep litter system, poultry are provided with a litter material to a depth of 10 to 15 centimeters on the floor of the pen. Local materials such as bagasse, lawn grass, trimmings, chopped rice straws, dry grass, sawdust, and wood shavings are used as a litter. The litter is stirred once or twice a week and kept dry at all times. When calculating the number of birds, it is usual to allow four to five birds per squ meter square for broilers and three birds per meter square for layers. In addition, perches are provided for roosting and the layers have nest boxes for laying eggs. So let's see if the one that I recorded on this day has anything in part similar to what the book describes. And so let's just look at this short video. As you can see, the litter here is on the floor, on the floor of the, the cage. This is a combination of straws and sawdust and wood chippings. You have the area for them to lay their eggs, basically in the corners. You have a feeding area right here, that you try to feed in, and also one right here. This is for water, this is for feeding right here. One is for feeding them, you know, the pellets. The ration, the grow ration, the layer ration, that kind of thing. And of course, you have some water here. As you can see, the water is a little dirty here, which means it needs to be cleaned. Water should be cleaned. Clean water should be given to them daily. This one is a little cleaner. So it would have appeared that the birds would have made a mess in the previous one. And as you can see, the population of birds is just about enough to house for the ratio of space to birds. All right, so as you can see, the birds are, you know, looking within the litter for anything they can eat, any particles they can pick up, anything they can eat. You have the lighting right here, especially for when they are chicks, use the lighting that can be used for warmth. Right, and so you see that they are very similar to what the book would have described. Here you have them feeding on some layer ration, because these are older birds, and so they are still, they are in the productive stage of their life. They are not growing anymore, they would have reached maturity, and so now they are ready for growing, for laying. You can see the wire mesh over here and the concrete as described in the book. So the concrete wall and the wire mesh. So this is exactly how the deep litter system is described in the textbook. This is what you, you would expect if you go to a farm, a poultry farm, and they say that they are using a deep litter system for rearing their birds. Right? You can see some of the birds, they have what you call, uh, their beaks would have been cut. They would have been de-beaked 
and you see here they are picking up my feet they're not picking see if they can find this you know this that whatever it might have been but they're picking up my shoestring no problem uh so yeah so the beaks of the birds have been you know cut uh burnt off in a process called the beacon and the main reason for this is to prevent what you call cannibalism where the birds would end up picking each other sometimes pick each other to death pick up the feathers pick each other to till they get cut and start bleeding so you have to debeak your birds so that they do not pick and cannibalize each other all right so this is a, just a little example of what a deep little system looks like uh in real life uh so yeah so this is what you would be working with if you are doing agriculture and especially if you're doing the if you're doing the double award and of course you have this one that is in the picture this one is what we call a battery system this one is a little bit more that's this is not animal friendly per se because the animal is going to spend all their lives within this cage can not really move can not really be free and so this is one of the systems that people kind of frowned upon you know peter and those kind of organizations frowned upon because this system is not really humane to the animals Whereas the deep little system is simply, you know, you trying to let them roam as free as they can, but in a protective environment. So let's just re read what a battery system is. A battery system. In a battery system, birds are housed in cages, as you can see here. This system is mainly used for layers where land is limited. The cages have these features. They are made with sturdy wire. They have a, a trough for food and water on the outside of the cage. There is an outward sloping floor to make egg collection easier. There is a removable tray beneath the wire floor for the collection of droppings. A cage for a single hen should be at least 36 centimeters long by 30 centimeters wide and 36 centimeters high. Cages designed to hold three hens should measure 90 centimeters long, 36 centimeters wide and 36 centimeters high. The cages may be stacked in three or more tiers. So, like I said, this is the battery system right here. And this system is kind of not too animal friendly a lot of people frown on this kind of system whether it is rearing birds or rearing animal um uh, ruminants this is what you call you know factory livestock production we just have them in there for the rest of their life until their productive age would have passed so i mean let's say here is for when you have limited land but all in all this system is not really so ideal for you know what so for a humane way of rearing birds you know you might have stressful birds they might produce eggs and the eggs might be affected you know the quality of the eggs can be affected by the level of stress that these birds are put under so yes again an example of the deep system right here in practice here in my local area we have the local school farm all right so that's a quick look at the deep little system you can compare it to the battery system where you see the battery system a little bit more inhumane to the animals where the deep litter is you know relatively safe or easy on the animals all right so i mean the different schools of thought on what system is best but you know you use your conscience and you can just be your guide all right so that's it for now like i said a quick quick little video based on something i would have recorded on this day all right so thanks for watching stay tuned for more agriculture science videos economics videos are purely videos all right thanks for watching thanks for listening